Time for sound design. Today I'm back with a video where I'm gonna turn a sample into a sampled instrument. I haven't made one of these videos for a while now um, and I found a great record that lends itself to being sampled uh, and the sample then being turned into a sampled instrument. So last week I was in Amsterdam and uh, always when I go somewhere I try to visit at least one record store. I went to Concerto and also Record Mania and at both stores I found a few nice secondhand records that are perfect for sampling. So the one that I want to focus on today is uh, this one, Street Organ Favorites. So as you can see, this is a picture of Amsterdam at the canals with a street organ. And this record is from 1980 and it's a collection of various popular street organ songs, uh, both international songs as well as Dutch ones. They're all instrumental, of course, and it's performed by two different street organs, the Three Wicks and the Mandarin. I already had a listen to this and there are some great pieces that have contained kind of open notes so then uh, instead of sampling like a melody or a phrase I just want to sample one note so I can turn it into an instrument. So let's put this on the record player and uh, go to Ableton and start sampling. So already on side A, track one, at the beginning, there is a section where I think it's perfect to sample. So if I play it from the start again, I mean, this could work. This is too busy, you think? And this section. So those that note is perfect, I think, for sampling. It's very high, so which is good because then we can pitch it down. And usually when you pitch it down, it sounds better than when pitching it up. So let's go to Ableton, put it into sampler and see if we can make something with this. So here in Ableton on track two, I have a sampler instrument and I'm going to drop the entire sample in here. Mute track one. Then let's um, go to sampler. So I'm going to decrease the release time to 500 milliseconds. And then let's find the bit. So if I play the original note, it's somewhere there. So zoom in. Yeah, so it's really this bit. So I'm adjusting the start and end points, and I turn on the sustain mode to backward forwards, and then set the loop something like this, add a bit of crossfade. So it's a D sharp. And it's very flat, so... So now when I play C on the keyboard, you actually hear C. But as you can see also in the waveform in sampler is that the left and the right channel are quite different. So one is like a very high sort of pitch tone, and the other one there's some more movement in there. So as you can see on the right channel, so let's see if I put the utility on left. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. If I put it on right. There's a bit of crackle in the sample, but it's an old vinyl record, so that gives part of the charm. I put a low cut of 100. And what I played now is the original uh, octave that the sample is in, which is quite high. So. I think when we play it one or two octaves lower, maybe even three octaves lower, it actually sounds better. So let's do that. You see, already, you can hear already this is more interesting. I'm gonna increase the attack a bit to make sure there's no click and also uh, increase the release to one second. Let's play two octaves lower. Three octaves. Four octaves, that's too much. I'm actually going to increase this to D sharp four. So 
So this is the original pitch. One octave lower. Two octaves lower. So now that we have the sample, it, it kind of works. You can play chords. Let's uh, decrease the attack time to 20 milliseconds. You can play long chords. I mean, if you play multiple no notes, of course, the noise is kind of sort of double as well. It gets a bit noisy if you play long like large chords um, but let's add some effects and I think there needs to be a bit of movement and of course some reverb so let's start with some reverb hybrid reverb um, let's put it on 35 dry wet And maybe just some auto pen actually to create some stereo movement. Or maybe we do quarter notes. A third actually. And then maybe a 20. That could actually be a good macro. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group the sampler and the EQ, the reverb and the auto pen into one instrument track so I can assign macros and later when I save this to my library of sampled instruments um, when I later use this in a track this sound I know I have some macros to play with so I don't have to think about what works well with this sound so let's select all the devices and do group into instruments rec and then I'm gonna assign the amount of the auto pen for the first macro, we named this to auto pen amount. So I can do 20 by default. I'm also going to map the dry wet of the reverb to macro 2. So I can easily vary that amount. No reverb. Completely wet. So I'm going to save this to my library of sampled instruments. I call it Street Organ Amsterdam. So next time I'm going to make a track, I can just pull up this sound and I have a ready-made sound that I created myself by sampling a vinyl record. And it's this vinyl record, Street Organ Favorites from 1980. I will link it down in the description if you're interested in hearing what kind of sound you can find on this record. This is the instrument I made in this video. If you're interested in sampled instruments, I have two libraries of sampled instruments that are free to download over on Gumroad. Go into the description, there's a link to um, the page on Gumroad. I will also link to a playlist with more videos where I create sampled instruments by sampling instruments, records and objects. As always, keep making music. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.